If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, leave a like. Chest Voice About two months ago, I received the following letter from a reader in Rouen. I would have liked to reply promptly, not only because the letter contained some infinitely kind and encouraging words for me as an occasional advocate and defender of the art of singing, but, more particularly, because it deals with a very important vocal problem on which I have for some time eagerly awaited an opportunity to put forward my modest opinion. Here is the letter or, rather, the relevant portion of the letter. I write to ask you for a bit of advice. I never sing chest tones above E, and when it is not necessary to sing loudly, I even perform E flat and D in a mixed voice. Although I have a solid and full-bodied medium register, it seems to me that in certain cases it is inadequate for loud tones. Indeed, all depends on circumstances. An expert singer such as you appear to be, madam, can frequently project enough sound on low notes, piano, while using a mixed voice. But such a singer must also be able to sing these notes as softly as possible with a chest voice. It is a mistake to think that this poor, chest voice, so discredited today, is reserved for heavy sonorities. The letter continues. I will single out a typical case which has prompted my long letter and on which case I beg your advice. I am referring to Debussy's Chevaux de Bois. For many years, I have sung the following phrase, Tournez aux sons du piston banker in a mixed voice, trying not to ruin my voice, and, sitting at the piano as I sing, since I always play my own accompaniments, the F-sharp on the syllable cur sounds a little shrill to me, especially in light of the vocal and instrumental crescendo. Obviously. Unless one has an exceptionally solid and full-bodied passage, like, for example, Madame Alice Raveau and the late Conchita Supervaya, the F-sharp would never be loud enough in such a case, where, indeed, the word vain cur is marked SFF, fortissimo. I am not sure that Debussy thoroughly understood the mechanics of the human voice, but when he wrote this F-sharp, he undoubtedly heard it as strong and vibrant. Thus it is not surprising that, performing it in a medium register, you realized it was too weak. It could not be otherwise. But you did not merely think it was too weak, subconsciously, you also had the impression that it lacked the desired character, that it did not express what it was meant to express. Again, you were right, as the following lines of your letter confirm. And so, this morning, as I was rehearsing Les Chevaux de Bois, which I was soon to perform for some friends, I was led for the first time, and somehow against my will, to support those last notes with a full chest voice. At first, I was startled, because the effect is somewhat vulgar, but after repeating it a couple of times, I realized it was not offensive, since the general mood of Verlaine's poem is one of loud popular rejoicing, exactly as Debussy has conceived it. Here, madam, you are perfectly right. By uttering that F-sharp in a chest voice, you produced a full tone, clearly audible, facilitating good projection of the word. Moreover, you satisfied the obvious intention of the composer by evoking through a slightly vulgar tone color the picturesque vision of a country fair. But you had to be naturally able to do it, you had to possess that special sonority, your palette of sounds had to include that particular color, in short, you had to be able to produce that F-sharp with a chest voice. You will notice, madam, that I always place the words, chest voice, between quotation marks, the fact is that the expression is as inaccurate as palatal voice, head voice, and so on. Such expressions are, according to a voice expert, only conventional words that facilitate ready understanding, for the voice is not produced in the chest any more than it is produced at the palate or in the head. By saying, chest tones, head tones, and so on, we merely designate the area where these tones resonate more or less exclusively. This said, I will drop the quotation marks in the interests of simplicity and say that the current denigration of the chest voice is absurd, this low opinion would have made all the great singers of the past shrug their shoulders impatiently, for these tones are essential to the beauty of the voice. One has only to read the accounts of master teachers, to recall the leading singers we have heard and their own comments on this subject, or to listen to recordings made by the great cantatrices to be convinced that, first, Chest tones are absolutely necessary to obtain richness, power, warmth, in any female voice, and, second, 
the use of chest tones has never caused harm to the upper register of the voice, as some would have us believe. To prove this, I shall limit myself to two or three telling examples. Lily Lehman, who, up to the last years of her life, performed with incomparable brilliance and purity the difficult high passages in the abduction from the Seraglio, always ended the phrase, De Himmel Siegen, Balone Dick, with a full chest voice G in the medium register, even after the trill on the preceding A. And, although she ranged from indescribable sweetness to bravura high notes in the Act II aria, Non Mi Di R, from Don Giovanni, she did not hesitate in Act I, when Donna Anna cries out for help to scream, this is the right word, dente, servi, on the A, middle range, chest voice. This is of course an exceptional case, nevertheless, it shows that this famous artist, despite the frequent use of chest tones, even some dangerous ones, left her marvelous top register intact. Madame Emma Cav recorded during a single session the aria of Mycelae with its hushed tones, the card scene from Carmen and the Marseillaise, using chest tones that take your breath away. Melba's recordings of 1906, particularly the one including the Air de la Folie from the Thomas Opera Hamlet, are irrefutable proof of the compatibility of a strongly supported chest voice and a brilliant, clear and agile high register. To repeat, madam, all the great singers have used the chest voice in the low register, they have done so, to be sure, with discernment and taste, with force or with tenderness as expression required. By low register I mean, for the contralto, the one that begins at E below middle C, and for the soprano, the one that extends from middle C up to F, first space. I consider these notes the pivotal points at which the voice must turn, it should be possible to produce them in either the chest or the medium register. Many artists will go higher in chest tones if necessary. But this is not advisable, though Manuel Garcia, brother of the great Molly Bran and of Pauline Viardot, says that, in women's voices, the chest register may extend up to C-sharp or D, I shall comment later on this matter. What is sure, for Saint Saints told me this, is that when Duprez was teaching Lee Milan, later Madame Carvalho, who sang the premieres of Juliet, Bossies and Mireille in Gounod's operas, all particularly high roles, he had her sing runs up to B-flat in chest tones. And, added Saint Saints, she must have had a very sturdy voice. I agree, but there is a world of difference between this approach and banning chest tones in a register where they are natural and normal and serve an artistic purpose. Nothing is weaker, more woeful, duller and more distressing than the mixed register used below F. Many teachers today say that if the mixed voice is correctly placed, correctly set and sounds good in the forehead cavities, it can replace the chest voice. Never, never, madam, can this be a true substitute. After hearing so many thin-voiced marguerites, though their voices were not thin because their chests lacked breadth, alas, I remember the pleasure I had at the 2000th performance of Faust, hearing Lee von Gaul articulate on a well-supported, distinctive timbre, those famous words, inaudible for the past few, I would very much like to know who that young man was. Following the death of M. Maiden, who had been her regular accompanist, I often had the great honor of accompanying Madame Patty. By this time, she avoided the high altitudes even though she still had an admirable A, a beautiful B-flat and even a C that she reached valiantly and quickly. But the medium range of her voice was still incredibly velvety, limpid, subtle and generous. Considering the volume and caliber of her voice, she could have reached the low notes without having recourse to the chest voice, unlike so many female singers of our time who, already out of breath when singing A and G, must descend to those depths via the chest voice. All the same, in Zerlina's first aria from Don Giovanni and in Cherubino's second aria from The Marriage of Figaro, Madame Patti used a well-supported and extremely mellow chest voice in all the low registers, to the delight of the listening ear and to Mozart's greater glory. The female singers I have mentioned so far, those who do not hesitate without thinking about it to use the chest voice in the low register, are all sopranos singing particularly high roles. In the same category, I might add Madame Nordica, Madame Giannina Russ, Madame Kusnetsov, Madame Poncel, Madame Blanche Marchesi, who, 
at the age of 75, has just made some remarkable recordings, Madame Emma Eames, Madame Alda, Madame Geraldine Farrar, who, in the third act of Manon, sang some poignant chest notes, Madame Marguerite Carr and Mlee Garden, Madame Fanny Heldy, Madame Ninon Valen, Madame Morina, and so forth and so on it would be appropriate to add to this long list some particularly high sopranos. Some illustrious specialists in light vocalizes, coloraturas as they are rather ridiculously described today in view of the fact that the word vocalize is colorator in German, veritable birds, in short, such as Madame's Barrientos, Verlet, Landuzzi, Hidalgo, Tetrazzini and Marcella Sembrick. To this count, I must add the soprano Erna Sack, who to the best of my knowledge possesses the highest notes of any living singer, but who nonetheless, upon leaving the highest vocal ranges where she performs with such ease, fearlessly returns to the medium range by means of a few strongly emphasized notes and with no recourse to the mixed voice that I repeat, not one of these artists, and we have their recordings to confirm my observations. Not one has been reluctant to use the chest voice, and this is as it should be. The chapter on this subject is too long to include in this video. Below are two more important points that Reynaldo Hahn mentions. If you like to read the whole chapter the link to the book is available below. Max Dialone, all Italian chantuses, use the chest tone. In Italy, people would hiss in disapproval if one sang Amneris or Delilah with the low register in head tones. Meanwhile, it is important to eliminate that unfortunate prejudice which deprives the art of singing of one of its most beautiful means of expression, one cannot ignore, writes Foray, the profound effects that women create by using their chest register.